Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Yeah, well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Dr. Ann Tilton. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here in Dallas, Texas on the Valder Beebe Show. Oh, my pleasure. Absolutely. Well, I'd like to share with my audience, Dr. Ann Tilton is Professor of Clinical Neurology, Chief Section of Child Neurology at Louisiana State University School of Medicine. And today she's here to talk about new treatment options for the lower limb spasticity in children age two and older. What is this condition, doctor? Well, spasticity is basically tightness in your muscles, but it affects more than just being tight. I, I often think of it as, when I'm talking to parents, of describing it as rubber bands. So your muscles are very tight, and because of that, it limits your function, because that's what we're really interested in is the patient's function. So as a child, their job is to run and jump and play and do all those things. So it limits their ability to kind of interact with their world. And so all of our goal is to improve that. When a child has this condition in the lower limbs, does it just affect the lower limb? Well, actually, no. It can affect lower limbs. It can affect lower and upper. It can just be one side of your body because cerebral palsy is really just uh, an umbrella term. And it can be for a number of reasons. So it's not one single diagnosis or one single disease. We often think of it because of the motor problems. And uh, with a lot of children being born prematurely, both legs are often involved. And so they walk on their toes or they need um, equipment to help them move and uh, to help them walk. And this study really looked at the disport that we were looking at, looked at children two years and above, and they were very interested if they fell under the category of cerebral palsy. And that, again, can be just not one reason, but many reasons in which the developing nervous system is affected. And because of that, they, it basically doesn't turn down the dial, and this tone is increased. But we are on one side, all four extremities, just the legs. The study was specifically the legs, however. I read a statistic that 10,000 10, children are born annually just in the United States. They will develop cerebral palsy. Is that correct? The numbers are pretty high. I mean, if you look at the general numbers in our population, adult and child, it's like 750,000 people. So this is an important step, particularly if you can start early, to influence growth and development. Uh, but in addition, yeah, one in 300 children has some aspect of it. But when they tell me my patient has cerebral palsy, I don't know if they just happen to walk on their toes or they what people often think of where all four extremities are involved. So it can be anywhere on that spectrum, but they fall in that category. What is Disport, and when will oh. it be available? Well, it's actually pronounced Disport, uh, and Disport, and it is available. And the exciting thing is that this study, where we looked at over 200 patients and compared the medication to placebo, found that it was safe and it was effective, and the FDA reviewed it in detail, as you know they do. And as of August 1st, it is FDA approved as the first pediatric indication in the United States. So this is very exciting. So it is available. Now, we've been using this group of medications for a while. And as a clinicians, we were very, very comfortable to say we think it's safe and effective. But until you go through the scrutiny of a huge study and then the scrutiny of the FDA looking at it, it's hard to convince maybe payers and other people. So this is a major step, I think, for our children and as you can see, quite a few children in the United States. Doctor, um, uh, you said that this recent approve, uh, uh, approval of uh, a disport, it, it has great implications for the patient? Well, what it allows the patient to do, if, if you go to your physician and you are, the in, you are appropriate 
for this is that if they can identify areas in which loosening the muscle would improve their function, then it can make a big difference. Uh, and gait, you know, the way they walk, like a heel-toe gait instead of toes, even just being able to wear braces and things like that. What we did in the study, again, just measure what, how tight the muscle was, was one aspect of it. But the other is to let the patients identify things that they had as goals to make them better. And fatigue improved. It was one of the most outstanding things. But tripping, falling, all of those were the type of considerations that they would indicate. And then they told us whether they thought they were better or not. And it did prove to be effective not only to just loosen the muscle, but in addition to make them um, more active in the sense of more functional. And that, I think, is a major step as well. So a little bit more uh, what the current science is looking towards, not just can you, we move you, but can you move better, which is critical. You've given us some great information. As we wrap up, my audience who's listening, who may be affected, who may be impacted, or just interested, where would you send them on the web? Well, I tell you where I'd start. I'd go to your physician, I'd go to your therapist and say, what do you think? What do you know about this? And, and let them help educate, because every child's different, an adult for that matter, but every child is different. And then the other way, so going at it from two angles, the other is to go to Dysport website, D-Y-S-P-O-R-T dot com, because the study was done in Dysport and they will have on that website a lot of information and a lot of general information on appropriate candidates and uh, things that can really help people know if they're the right person. I want to thank you so very much for this information. It's been truly interesting. And thank you for being my guest today on the Valder Beebe Show, Dr. Ann Tilton. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> 